Simon, welcome back. How are you today? Good, good. You? Awesome. So you told me that today you want to talk about Zovolt, but Zovolt is not really part of the finance suite. So why? That's a good question. So I, we, I think we originally booked this to talk about Zo Expense because this was the right course of action. But yeah. you know, I think that it's really important to to highlight the really good apps that Zoho has made over the coming years, right? In the in the last little while, mm -hmm. and I think one of those is Zoho Vault. To be quite frank with you, like it's it's phenomenal. And now it's connected to your world because I know that <clears throat> you're a finance guy, right? Books, expense, subscriptions, right. all that, right? Inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question because, you know, it has nothing to do with finance, but all the things to do with finance, essentially, because our team in Toronto handles a lot of the accounting, you know, in the US and Canada, we do a ton of projects, every project has specific, you know, access users, there are people assigned to specific projects, and all of this ties into security and access bottom line. I see. So, so you're creating yeah. the passwords and you're sharing them with the team without them knowing the passwords. And this is how you protect your customers, basically. That's right. Yeah. So we have different ways of assigning passwords to specific teams mm -hmm. and making sure that the passwords are restricted from either viewing or editing. And also certain passwords we can set that are temporary that they just have access for a specific certain period of time and they need an approval for. Got it. And Okay, so in this session, I assume we're not going to talk about the basics, how to create Zovolt, how yeah. to... We're going to do the cool stuff that you can do with Zovolt that business owners can really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, just okay. kind of, uh, you know, organizing yourself a little bit more with Zoho Vault because everybody understands the shared passwords with the user themselves and then passwords that are shared within the team. This yes. will take it one step further and just, you know, kind of reiterate the fact that we can do a lot more with Zoho Vault and it's quite useful. Awesome. Okay. So okay. Le let's begin. You can share okay. your screen. Great. And take us to the Holy Land. Fantastic. So this is a practice account. This is a test account that we've used before, I believe on the same call. So we're going to go ahead and open Zoho Vault and in this specific computer, Zoho Vault is not installed because um, I have computer? Zoho Vault for the computer. Yeah, oh. because it, typically you would have Zoho Vault as the extension here. I see. But I want to show this from uh, a fresh perspective so that we don't get sidetracked with you know uh, how it's already done in our company at the moment. So this okay. is obviously a test and, and all this is all fake, but um, the ideology is still the same. So... From the get-go, everybody probably understands there's the um, dashboard. There are the passwords that are you know, under your specific username. This user in specific is a master admin. So in the settings, you have much more uh, configuration options there. And the interesting part about this is you can really take this to the next level. So we'll start with the users. And this is where everything is kind of the beginning to everything starts here. And... I'm currently Barney. So we also have John Doe. It's a, it's a test. And this person is just a user. And, you know, you can, you can make this person an admin and there are different uh, access points for this. But typically, I like to enable everybody as a user rather than an admin or super admin. Admins can approve and do some things that the users can't do. But for now, we'll just keep them as users. Okay. So that's the first step. Now, the roles, which are what we just talked about, they're high level. There are only three roles at this point. What we need to focus on is the user groups. Okay. okay. So this is where you can group some teams together with some sort of a filter. So we have, you know, we have bookkeeping and we can add another, let's just say we call it consulting. And we'll add John to consulting. Okay. Because John's doing a lot of the consulting work. So we could say John's part of the consulting team. And this can be departments, this can be projects, this can be uh, classes of clients. So you can have, and you can have a, multiple BC. people in one group, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have many, many people in one group. And the other beautiful thing that I always like to do is enforce multi-factor authentication. And this is super important. Once you do this, the entire company as a whole starts to use multi-factor authentication. So it's, it's incredible. And, and it forces the user. And that's excluding the login to ZO1? That would be including, from what I understand. So it's the same 
two-factor authentication that you will have on your ZO1. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So um, from here on out, we pretty much go ahead into the passwords area. And this and is just, where you can add one, all the... Yeah. One more thing to add. If you can go back to the uh, settings that you were, mm -hmm. uh, with the two-factor authentication, ZO is an application, a mobile app name, uh, one oath. Mm -hmm. Awesome. When you yeah. log into Zoe, it pops up on your phone, you approve it, and you're done, and you're good yeah. to go. So it's very, very good. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So um, from here on out, you can do a bunch of different things. You can import passwords from your typical uh, comp you know, programs that you used previously. Like, for example, with Chrome, I guess the passwords will go through here. But again, nothing's configured in this Chrome. Mm -hmm. But you can download the CSVs and load them in here. Everything is smooth as butter. It, it does a really good job at loading them into here. And the important piece now is once you have the passwords in here is each password can be shared with the rest of the team. So you can say that this is a personal password or a password that you can share. And this is that the way that triggers the ability for you to share it across the board. Okay. And if so, it's personal, yeah. I assume that no one can see it on you. Yeah. Yeah. So I typically have my personal accounts, like, you know, my social media accounts, the things that I like to watch on YouTube, like music and stuff, all that stuff will be all the per on the personal side. And then you can share the others with the other people. So um, you can take a password and you can click share this way. Okay. Now, the best way to do this is once you actually share the password, mm -hmm. you have a bunch of different capabilities. And this is where the user groups really come into play. Because imagine you have a team of 20, 30, 40, 50 and up, right? You're not going to sit here and click Okay, grant, right. view, modify, manage, right? It's too much work. Instead, yes. we go into the actual groups and we could pick a group that's actually specific to the projects or specific to the access. And that's right. also a preferred way because if you, right now, we have two people in the bookkeeping team and mm -hmm. in the future you have 50. Exactly. The permission that being applied on the group will be applied also on future people that go to the group. Exactly, so it's, exactly. It's awesome. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you want to standardize this process within the company. Companies grow, people come and go for personal reasons, for company reasons. As soon as somebody disengages from a company, you never want them to have access to passwords that they may have access before, right? right. So you want to terminate the, the kind of connection with the company. Yes. And in doing so, you standardize things a bit better. Now, there's a bunch of other things that we can do here, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. So all passwords is just listing everything all together. But in the folders, you can actually classify password into specific folders. So for example, for our operation, we have a bookkeeping folder that has a bunch of passwords for client number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can do this in a few different ways. You can do this through tags here, but folders is just a cleaner way to do it. And, you know, we can have a miscellaneous one where all the other ones go in. But uh, for the bigger clients that have a bunch of passwords that we use for access, whether that's the accounting system, Google Drive files, um, certain banking uh, access that's limited to, let's say, statements only, um, mm -hmm. then we do it this way. And every single folder has the same capability. So you pretty much right click and you click share folder and you do the exact same thing here. Okay. So you can do a password specific, but you can also do a folder specific. So that's another way to approach it. That's awesome. That so you can have, yeah, of course. So if you have your, for example, a few hundred clients. Mm -hmm. Or you have a division. Your I know that you deal with the Europe and the, and the US and Canada exactly. and other countries. You can do it also per location. That's awesome. Exactly. Very good. Yeah, and it's super useful too. And then you can also give access to the master folder. Okay, and when you grant access, you can include all the subfolders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So you can have the entire bookkeeping operation or management team have access to this, and that would be one user group, and then bookkeepers will be specific to each folder. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing that's really, really cool. The other thing is uh, that I really like personally is the ability to share a password, but restrict it at the same time. So you can have access control for each specific password um, and every password that's within there. And you can add a bunch of admins. Like let's say you have a management team. You can add a bunch of users in the management area and the admin area so that they can approve the access for their team. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have one senior accountant, let's say, who's going to mm -hmm. be approving their entire team of access requests. 
So you can select the users. For now, we only have John Doe. And you can even do two approvers. So you can do one after the other to really restrict certain ones, right? So this is where, you know, an employee is on the last day. They're trying to get some extra information out of the company. Then you can restrict it this way. And then it's a no-go. Yeah, and it's very so this, common. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Last day, they try to drink your company. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So you have a bunch of different options here. You can uh, access the approval rate. You can even do it, uh, the automa automatic approval within a certain time. Um, all of this is fully customizable and super easy to use. So it's super, super nice. Everything is beautiful. I, I Personally, I mean, I've used these a couple of times in previous companies that I've worked at. And this is the easiest way to manage it from an admin perspective, from what I've seen so far, because things can get pretty complicated when it comes to passwords. And it's such a sensitive topic that you want to make sure you're doing this right. You know, now let's talk about the, the different sharing option. Mm -hmm. um, so you have there the, the uh, click, it's a one time click, something like that. Yeah. 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 One so click. one click lock in. So this is a very cool option. Mm -hmm. So let's say that uh, if you have, for example, I know that you know it, but for people, uh, let's yeah. say that you have uh, a few employees, you don't want them to know the password, but you want them to use it. So you're mm -hmm. giving them the one click login ability. They will be able to go, let's say to Amazon, they click on it. It will log them into Amazon, but they will not know the password. So mm -hmm. that's very, very cool. Yeah. So that's, you know, this is the capabilities of the actual sharing and the people that have this ability can actually see like different options, right? To grant access. And again, this is good for admins because admins can share access and be able to do this on their own. Um, the other piece here that I really, really like is when you add a new password, you can do it through a site. So specific to some sort of a program and you get a bunch of different ones that are here and there's a lot of them. You know, McDonald's is really important. I just saw that one. Mm -hmm. Baskin Robbins, we like our ice cream. So you can do it this way, but you can also customize the passwords through just a typical password addition. So you can add passwords manually this way. And this is where things can get really, really nice because category is the way that you can filter the passwords on their own. Because right now you and I just talked about filtering passwords through folders and users. Yes. but you can filter passwords through categories. Okay. And you can add a bunch of different custom fields. If you want to, this is really up to you. Now, when you're doing it this way, you can have different types of passwords. Okay. So you can have bank accounts, you can have, um, you know, you can have accounting systems, you can have cloud storage areas. Again, these are different, right? Because yeah, these are presets. And so on. Yeah. yeah. And the beautiful part about this is when you get to this part, let me see if I can, I'll get there right now. Password categories. These are out of the box. Okay. And when they're out of the box, you can't really edit them. You're going to have an error here saying that you can't change anything at all, except maybe the personal data, but you can't delete them. You can't modify them to any other capability. So what I typically do is I, I just hide them and I create one from scratch. Mm -hmm. And this is where you can add a bunch of different areas and different fields for people to actually fully add in there, right? So if they want to add specific areas into the password, they can do it this way. And then it's a different category. So now, you can customize mm -hmm. not only the category, also the information of the passwords inside yeah, of it. Exactly, exactly. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah. So this is super cool. Um and then obviously you got the password policy. Now, this is really, really interesting. This is pretty much, you know, company-wide. Uh, you can change things and, and add and, and remove. But the way to do this is you can make another password type active. And this is where it tries to, when a new password is created under the vault umbrella, it tries to standardize it to make it very restrictive so that you have to make a really good password. So for example, recycle password in 60 days, this one, for example, because it's moderate, it doesn't have to have special characters, but it has to have the rest of them. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yes. And it's super nice. I mean, you can have so much. You can even start from scratch, create your own, right? So you can so create you can... a crazy policy, like 25 characters, yeah. symbols, big, small, whatever. Exactly. So yes, the other way that we can do this is we can, when we add the password, and this is a really nice, beautiful touch, 
is you can actually create a password from the box. Like you can ask Zoho Vault to auto-generate a very complex password mm -hmm. and you can change it if to your liking, right? And it tells you how secure it is and you can add special characters. You What do you mean to your liking? <laughs> to your liking in terms of how <laughs> complex you wanted it to be, right? So you could do like, let's say a 10 uh, digit password, but this might be standardized with the policy. So we could change that, right? Because mm -hmm. this is generated from the policy. And yes. then you can click copy and then save it into another program where it's a nice, nice secure password and everybody can standardize it, okay? You got it. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. We like this area as well. This is where you get some nice, um, you know, optics of how the company is doing from a password perspective. You can request password changes through here. It's just all in all, our, our firm is extremely happy with this product. Like, it's incredible. You, told, you also told me that you can track when employees are using specific passwords. Yeah. And that would be through the audit area. And okay. you can export this and filter the columns and try to figure this out. This can take a bit of area to finick around and try to figure this out. You have to add a bunch of them. You can say, for example, um, let's just say everybody who's using Adobe, right? Mm -hmm. You can filter Adobe. Okay. And you could see who's doing what password and how many times they're actually logging into the password. So if you have some kind, as you said, an employee that uh, is not going to be an employee today, mm -hmm. you can check what logins he used exactly. the same day that he left yep, yep. before he sold your database to someone else. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's pretty nice because then you can see if there are any areas of risk, right? And that's where the super audit can actually help out quite a bit. But um, this you need to configure on your own because it's a little bit more complex and more, you know, advanced you could say and tell, tell me something yeah. simon mm -hmm. in lots of my videos i'm telling people to be aware that uh, that they need to restrict password restrict access to different areas in the system because not all the employees are cool and some people telling me that i'm paranoid that it's so true what do you think about it am i paranoid or it's really you heard cases that employees these crazy things to their you know, yeah. workplaces it, it depends on the relationship you can have an employee that's perfectly fine and then at one point something switches and you you're disconnected there's uh there's some tension for example you never know right uh, we're human like things happen and the last thing you need is one of your clients or one of your programs to kind of have a breach because of a disgruntled employee And I'm, yeah. I'm all with you because this is the number one thing we're, that we need to protect. As we keep developing in this technological world, things are more you know, remote. We're more on the computer. We're using the passwords a lot more. We have passwords to a ton of different websites. I believe like we have probably over 500 passwords that we manage at this point. And it's very, very scary to have some sort of an area of risk. And If yep. you're in accounting, you understand auditing. And with audit, there's controls, right? So we're trying to control the pieces that are very, very vulnerable. And our customers love it. You know, customers enjoy the fact that everything is secure. That's secure. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I'm with you all the okay. way. Very good. So I'm not just, I am paranoid, but not that paranoid. No, not at all. No. Okay. It's very valid. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Simon, thank you very much. You're awesome as always. Even tools that I'm using on a daily basis, you always have your way to give me more value and show me more cool things. So really anytime. appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. See you next time. Yep.